Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna miss that stuff. A regular table just opened up. Just finishing up our breakfast meeting this morning. I didn't sleep well last night, and this has happened really three times in the last um, month where I've woken up in the middle of the night and not been able to fall back asleep just because of stuff that's weighing really heavy on my heart and my mind kind of spinning and it's kind of a new thing for me but I feel like a lot of what we've been through in this last year is really starting to catch up to me and just weigh really heavy on me and not getting sleep or not being able to fall asleep is one of the most blatant examples that I have of not being in control of it, not being able to, like in 12-step language we say that we're powerless over it. You know, I can't wish it away, fix it. can't fix it, can't say a magic prayer and have it disappear. And that's a hard thing for me to say because I I generally like to say, if people are like, how's it going? I like to be like, oh, good. And and I like to kind of... Um, be lighthearted, not have... Yeah, any... and, and like to think that I am in control of it. But the reality is we're not in control of it. And even though it's hard to be in reality, I think it's better. I, I'm trying to believe right now that victory looks like surrender, not like actually being able to control it yeah. because if victory w was achieved in being able to control it I don't think there would be any victory right now for me it's just been really heavy stuff we haven't been reading the comments for the last I think at least week and a half which has been a huge change for us because before we read and tried to respond to almost every comment that was written. And it's been a really mixed thing. Part of it has been really great. Like, I just noticed this part of my brain like completely free up. It actually, we didn't plan it this way, but it came right before my writing retreat, which if I was trying to respond to comments on the writing retreat, I think, well, first of all, I don't think I could have done it. And second of all, it would have taken up all my energy and I feel like we're able to put out videos that are more honest because I know that I'm not going to get that immediate feedback. So we're just kind of putting stuff out there that we want to put out there, not that we want people to respond in a certain way to. It's kind of weird. I do feel like a lot's changing now, even with letting Seven do the vlog and yeah. not doing the comment thing. It, allowed me in kind of a way to just put a reset button and say, however I've been doing things, I have permission to not just do it that way. But the negatives are, I feel pretty disconnected from all of you guys or how the yeah. videos are landing. Like, so I don't really know how to deal with that. Like, I hope we don't lose connection or relevancy because we just get like lost in our own little world. So I just, I wonder if there's a compromise that can be had where once a week we like check up on comments for like an hour and then we like cut it off at that point or? I'm just kind of scared that I'll get like sucked back in. Yeah. I don't know if I can handle like the, the moderation thing. Yeah. At first it was really hard. Like yeah. the first few days I saw the comments and I was like, oh, those are just like one click away. I'm one click away from getting all this like real time live stuff about ourselves. Yeah. 
It's like it's like a mirror being there and not looking at it. I think it's cool to let you know by us not doing these comments, we're we're actually real humans. <laughs> and we sometimes can't handle things and we need to be able to do what's best for us. And I think that's valuable for you to even experience. Final Cut Pro, the editing software that I use to edit all these vlogs, just came out with a new version. And I downloaded it, and now all my old vlogs, like my library, it's called, I guess, won't open and I can't get it to work. So it's been kind of frustrating. I've spent the entire morning and part of yesterday, so probably like three hours, just trying to figure out how to open to get the software to work. Now I'm on hold with Apple. I've been talking to them for about 30 minutes. And it's kind of crazy because the guy has control of my screen. He puts this like little red arrow up and shows me like where to click. So hopefully this does it. After 49 minutes, I just got disconnected. I hope this guy calls me back. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Cool. Sounds good, thank you. He just called back. Oh. And um, recently, one is I just updated to Sierra. And also I just um, updated to Final Cut 10.3. Okay, I, I am trapped here in activity monitor, force quitting application, and like three hour export XML file. I don't even know what that means, hell. But Apple was extremely helpful and is walking me through this process on the phone that I'll find out in another three hours if it works. But I thought it was cool that I just even got to talk to someone on the phone for free. So I'm not complaining, it's just like, I haven't done one tiny second of editing today. Just eating some cookie dough, it's been a hard day. And then I quickly put it in the fridge, otherwise I'd probably eat like half of it. Until I made myself sick, I already feel a little sick. The thing that makes this so difficult is when I'm working on these like tech support issues, it feels so non-productive emotionally. Like I just worked for five hours and I have nothing, nothing, zero to show for it. I think that's the problem with any like creative work in a way is there's all this behind the scenes time that's like technical. Seven edited every vlog episode last week and it's fun when you're actually editing, but what people don't see is that it can spend, you can spend hours just messing around with files or trying to figure out why the music isn't synced correctly or to create enough storage space. I guess you just gotta see it as part of the process, um, even though it's not the glorified part. on the road just laying like a whole pile laying there. People think babies and toddlers are hard. Try having teenagers. <laughs> 
<laughs> they're just, they're hard on a whole nother level. I mean, toddlers are hard too, but I don't think I, I think I definitely underestimated when people said teenagers are hard. I underestimated what that really meant. But the thing I never heard about was that teenagers are also a blessing. But they're hard. But they're a blessing. But they're hard. <laughs> November 1st, it is 80 degrees today, which means we are eating outside. What? Whoa, what is going on there? That's crazy. You see all that? And they're all over there, too. This was here a couple years ago. Yeah. They were all on this thing. What causes that? It is time for story time. Look at this. Wow. One of them is Joab. Joab is with you. So Joab's kind of working things from behind the scenes. The woman answered, As surely as you live, my lord the king, no one can turn to the right or to the left from anything, my lord. The king says, Yes, it was your servant, Joab. The story is getting intense. We got brothers killing brothers, brothers sleeping with fathers, wives on rooftops. Pretty uh, brutal stuff. But one of the things that we believe is that for a faith to be real, it's got to be able to make sense of the extremes that life has to offer. If if our faith only makes sense to ourselves or to our children in this very like shallow realm that's like Hallmark cards or normal American life, then it's not even real. So we think it's worth diving into these topics that are presented in the story. Mm. This right here is my crack cocaine. Time to wind down around the fire with a cigar and conversation, just like we do every Tuesday. <clears throat> One of the things we talked about tonight was Seven actually shared about some of the difficulty he's having writing these songs. It's really been a challenge for him to find inspiration and discipline. Um, and it was crazy because I'm like wondering, man, was this the right challenge to give him? Um, to do these, he's doing this challenge where he's trying to do 100 songs in 100 days. And I told him I'd give him 100 bucks if he did it. And he's 22 songs into it. Um, but I think he feels a lot of pressure even because we've talked about it on the vlog. And he's worried about disappointing me. But I want him to know that I'm proud of him no matter what. It was good to talk about though. Hey guys, we're on Patreon and if you believe in or find value in what you're seeing in our videos, we'd appreciate it if you felt like giving. We have a link down below where you can give to our family so that we can keep making these videos.